Good evening. A lot quieter this evening, isn't it? Everybody's ready to go. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you here and invite you back at any opportunity you can be here. On our sick list this morning, uh, we mentioned Zelma Evans and uh, Dorothy Chang, Evan Huber. So we need to remember those folks in our prayers. They're not feeling well. And Patty McGinnis will be having a procedure tomorrow, so we'll just remember Patty. Traveling out of town, the Hubers are still on their way back. The Mitchells are out of town, Ron and Carrie, and the Romines are out of town. Serving tonight, Greg Redman will be leading us in singing. Drew Walker will have the opening prayer. Patrick Winhorse will have the closing prayer. Tullus Crawford will take care of the Lord's Supper. And Carlos will bring us the lesson. Also, Group 1 meets tonight following services. Is there anything I failed to announce? Great.
Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we approach thy throne of grace, thanking thee for this opportunity that we've had to assemble here today and through our Bible classes, study another portion of your words, sing songs of praise, and hear a lesson from the Bible. Our Heavenly Father, we'd first like to thank the visitors that have come our way, and we ask you if you'd be with them and give them safe journeys to and from their destinations. We ask our Heavenly Father to be with those who are mentioned in the announcements this morning and this evening that are uh, battling with health struggles right now. Uh, Zelma Evans, be with her. Dorothy Chang, Tullus, be with the physicians that are ministering to his heart that they can correct his problem. 
be with the others that uh, that uh, have been mentioned as well. Our Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to be with us now as we sing these songs of praises and hear a portion of your word. Be with Carlos as he brings a lesson. Give him ready recollection of what he studied and prepared. And these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.
coming home. Good evening. evening. It's great to see you on this beautiful day the Lord has blessed us with, for us to have another opportunity to worship the Lord our God in spirit and in truth. If you have your personal copy of of God's Word, turn to the book of Ephesians. The chapter is 2 and the verses are 1 through 3. This is going to be our scriptural text on this evening. Ephesians, the chapter is 2 and the verses are 1 through 3. So the Bible reads... (coughs) And you were dead in the trespasses of your sins, in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. It seems, as of late, that zombies are all the rage. Arlene and I were laying in bed a few weeks ago, and you know we were kind of trying to look through Netflix and all that, trying to find something to watch, and I was just kind of, my, my mind was kind of blown with all the zombie stuff that's out there. Shows, movies, I mean, there's even comics, all describing humans that were once alive, but are now half alive and half dead. Some might describe certain zombies as faster than others. Some, some shows or movies might even uh, describe certain zombies as slightly smarter than others, but all zombies nonetheless. Now, it is usually some type of virus or some sickness that begins uh, with a small, a small group or a small amount that uh, eventually wipes out and infects most of the world, and uh, those who remain alive who are, who, who are not initially wiped out, uh, you know, they basically turn into these zombies and, and there are certain individuals who have to battle against it. But it's just, it, there's just a lot of, of that that's been around, I mean, for quite some time, right? There's been a lot of movies and shows and all these things regarding zombies. But with these things in mind, this morning, uh, we're going to be, excuse me, this evening, we're going to be studying the subject, how to avoid becoming spiritual zombies, how to avoid becoming spiritual zombies. And there are three things that we must do to avoid becoming spiritual zombies. The first of which is this. We must avoid roaming around with no direction. We must avoid roaming with no direction. You see, spiritual zombies wander aimlessly. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians. The chapter is 9, and we're going to read verses 24 through 26. 1 Corinthians, the chapter is 9. And the verses are 24 through 26. There the Bible reads, Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air. But I discipline my body, and I keep it under control lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. You see, Paul says that he does not run aimlessly. He says that he has a purpose, and that purpose is to finish the race and take hold of the prize, which is an imperishable crown. You see, all runners are running in the race of life. Some are running for the Lord's team, but most are wandering aimlessly on the devil's team. These are the spiritual zombies that we must avoid becoming. They have no direction. They have no purpose. They have uh, nothing going for them, nothing directing their lives, and they have no intention of finishing the race. And as a result, they appear lost and confused. You see, the Christian's goal is to have eternal life with Christ Jesus. Our goal is to one day possess the crown of life. We know that that's our goal. We aim for it, and we are striving and working to obtain it. Spiritual zombies do not have this guidance in life. Not because they cannot obtain it, but because they are simply not looking for it. 
Their focus is elsewhere, as it was for us when we too were spiritual zombies, when we too were spiritually dead and spiritually lost. And as a result, they wander aimlessly. But spiritual zombies also follow other zombies. They follow the course of this world and the prince of the power of the air. Why do we do the things that we do? Why do we believe the things that we believe? You see, Jesus spoke of the blind leading the blind when he was describing the Pharisees in Matthew chapter 15, and the verse is 14. He describes them as blind guides. They, and there are blind spiritual zombies with no direction, leading others astray just as the Pharisees led those astray in their day. And people who do not think for themselves follow after these blind guides. They follow after the course of this world, which is really allowing sin to run their life. And when one follows the courses and the values of this world, they follow Satan. You see, Satan is behind all the evil in the world. He is behind all of the, uh, all, all the people that he has persuaded to follow after him by making it appear that there is direction in anything but God when there is not or making it appear that their hearts provide good guidance when they do not. When we do not make the conscious choice to follow God, we are being misled by God's enemy. You see, spiritual zombies also investigate nonsense. Zombies, for the most part, are, are very unintelligent. You watch these shows, you watch these movies, for the most part, they're all, uh, they're all described as very unintelligent beings. A rock gets thrown in one area and the zombies, they all move to investigate. A twig breaks in another area and they have to go and find the source of the noise. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 4 and the verse is 14. Ephesians, the chapter is 4 and the verse is 14. There the Bible reads, So that we may no longer be children, tossed to and fro by the waves carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, and by craftiness in deceitful schemes. Brethren, when there is no real direction for our lives, we are tossed to and fro, and we are carried about by things that should not move us. I remember when I was about to graduate high school, I really didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. You know, there are things that, that I enjoyed doing, things that I thought would be a good career, but I didn't know for sure what I wanted. And I was getting ideas thrown at me left and right, some of which sounded interesting, and I would do research on them, and, and then something else would catch my attention, something else would catch my mind, and I would go and do research on something else. But I, I would, there were times where I would go back and forth researching, you know, one, two, or, or three different careers. Spiritual zombies are those whose life is all about investigating the nonsense of the world. They waste time looking for answers in all the wrong places. You see, when I became a Christian, my life made more sense and my purpose was more visible. When we have direction from God, we become immovable from the course that he would have us to take. So if we, if we wish to avoid becoming spiritual zombies, then we must avoid roaming with no direction. And our second point on this evening is this. If we wish to avoid becoming spiritual zombies, then we must avoid the spiritually walking dead. You see, the spiritually walking dead are those who, do not, or, or those who have not died to iniquity. Now, <clears throat> this is not only describing the people of the world. I, I want us to consider Christians who are holding on to sin as well. You see, Paul says that we, uh, we were all once dead in the trespasses and sins that we once walked. Now, when I say that we are to avoid the, the, or those who, are, who have not spiritually died to iniquity, I am not saying that we must completely stay away from such individuals, nor am I saying that we should avoid them as if they are some type of plague. I mean that we must be mindful of the time that we spend with them and we must be mindful of the distance that lies between us and them. We were once infected with the same sickness 
that those who, who are still lost in the world, those who are still, still spiritually dead, we were once infected with that same sickness. So we are not better than them. We have simply been blessed with a cure that came through Christ. But just like someone who isn't a zombie can become one if they get too close to a zombie, we too can get pulled back into a life of sin and rebellion against our God if we are not mindful of how close we are allowing ourselves to be towards those who are willfully engaging in sin, who are not trying to keep away from the things of the world. But when the distance between us and the spiritually walking dead has shrunk, and when we find ourselves around these individuals, we should attempt to help them be cured of their sickness just as we were cured of our sickness. They are like unaware death row inmates on their way to execution, as we, when we were living in sin, were in the exact same position. They are asked what they would like for that, their last meal, and they only hear meal and ignore the fact that it will be their last. They are surrounded by uniformed men leading them to their demise, and they willingly follow. You know, in uh, parts of Africa, it, when they want to trap monkeys, when they want to trap little monkeys, what they do is they, they, they bore a hole in, in a tree or, or something like that, and they put some food in there. And the food is just big enough for the monkey to slip his hand in. But once he grabs the food, he, he doesn't let go. He doesn't let go, and, and, and he's stuck in that position, failing to realize if he just drops the food, he can let his hand out. But he holds on so tightly. But if he would just let go, he would not be captured. Ladies and gentlemen, we have decided to let go of the sins in our life that would, that would have eventually killed us, and thus we have the opportunity to live. We let go because God made it known to us what the result of holding on to such things would be. Turn to the book of 1 Corinthians, the chapter is 6, and let us read verses 9 through 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. There the Bible reads, Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of God our God. Ladies and gentlemen, we can hold on to sin and lose God, or we can hold on to God and inherit his kingdom. The spiritually walking dead do not prioritize following Jesus. People want to follow the big brains of the world, just like zombies are after any brains that they can find. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and read verses 18 through 21. First Corinthians, the chapter is 1, and the verses are 18 through 21. The Bible reads, For the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. Ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing wrong with having great amounts of knowledge. But worldly knowledge will do nothing for our souls, no matter who says otherwise. It is the spiritually walking dead that fail to prioritize gaining knowledge from and following after Christ. And it is the deceived walking dead that fail to prioritize the knowledge and wisdom gained from Christ over any and all other information available. So if we wish to avoid becoming spiritual zombies, then we must avoid the walking dead. We must avoid roaming with no direction. And our third and final point on this evening is this. If we wish to avoid becoming spiritual zombies, 
then we must avoid spiritual zombie desires. We must avoid spiritual zombie desires. See, some spiritual zombies want to make other zombies. Other people who have a brain and who do not desire to wander aimlessly are viewed as a threat. So spiritual zombies want to keep the status quo and make sure everyone believes and acts in line with the crowd. Basically, there are some spiritual zombies that desire those who are not like them to be like them. They do not want to be healed. They do not want to be better. They do not want to remain. They want to remain in their mindless state, having no regard over their soul, but desiring to have others have the same mentality that they do. And and they desire to have others live in the passions of the flesh, just as they do. Carry out the desires of the body and mind, just as they do. And become or remain children of wrath, just as they are. Some spiritual zombies want to remain spiritual zombies and want to make sure that there are more spiritually dead than there are spiritually living. Even though they may appear to be completely dead, there is still hope for such individuals. And we must pray for these people. And we must maintain awareness of opportunities to help them be cured and rescued from their lost state that we ourselves were once in. But there are some spiritual zombies who don't really know what they desire. They are, these are those who are spiritually dead, but they are not opposed to being cured from their sickness. They may even be unaware of their sickness. They may see the spiritual death around them and think it normal. Or maybe they are are looking for a life, or maybe they are are tired of uh, the, the ways of Satan that lead to permanent death. In any case, it should be the desire of the spiritually living to save those in this zombie-like state. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a responsibility to the Lord, and we have a responsibility to those who are still spiritually dead to help them find life everlasting. In Romans chapter 1, in the verses 16, the Bible records for us, that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation for anyone who believes. It is the gospel that has the power to cure the sickness of sin that infected and infested the world from the creation of man. Ladies and gentlemen, as we are all greatly aware, we have that cure. And we have been called to go into the world and proclaim the gospel. We have been called to go into the world and proclaim that cure to the whole of creation, as we see in Mark 16, and the verse is 15. The world is infected. The cure is readily available. The question that I want to leave us with, the question that I want to leave in our minds, is how much do we love those around us to tell them about the cure that they too can have and avoid becoming or remaining spiritual zombies. You see, people are walking around not realizing that they're really half dead and that full death will come once they lose their spirit. That's the death that we have been blessed to avoid. That's the death that these individuals can be in a position to avoid. But us knowing what they must do in order to avoid that death We, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we must speak up and we must let the world know that there is a cure for the sin that plagues the world and that they can be rescued and that they can be relieved of their death. They can have spiritual life and they can avoid the permanent death, that spiritual death, which is the death of the soul. This must be a priority for us as Christians. We have been blessed to be rescued. We must strive to do our part to help rescue others. So where do you stand on this, mor- this evening? Those of us who are Christians should be affected by what we have heard from the word of God this day. And if you are not a Christian, our prayer is that the Lord gives you the time needed to reflect on where you are headed. And if you have realized that that is towards an eternity separated from him, that outcome can be altered this day by obeying the gospel, which begins by hearing God's word, which you have done on this evening. Believing Jesus to be the Son of God, repenting, having the change of mind that leads to a change of life, turning away from sin, turning to God, allowing Him to guide your life, 
confessing Jesus to be the Son of God, being baptized for the forgiveness of sins, and rising up to walk in newness of life. This is what the Scriptures teach everyone must do in order to become a child of God. And that opportunity is yours today. The water is ready. If you desire to become a child of God, that can happen right now. Maybe you're here and you are a Christian. And maybe you have allowed yourself to be in this zombie-like state. Maybe you have not been doing the things. Maybe you have been walking around with no direction. Maybe you have been among the walking dead, and maybe uh, you, you are doing a, a, the, the things that spiritual zombies desire. Maybe your focus has not been where it needed to be. Well, the beautiful thing is that Christians can go to God. We can go to our Father. We as children of the Heavenly Father can go to Him. We can pray to Him. We can ask Him for forgiveness. We can repent, have that change of mind that leads to a change of, of life. And we can ask for prayers on our behalf from our brothers and our sisters in Christ. So wherever you are on this evening, if you need to become a child of God, or if you are a child of God and you need to make things right with your Heavenly Father, we ask that you make a wise-hearted decision while together we stand and sing the song that has been selected. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, group one's meeting after the we dismiss, and is there anything else that needs to be announced? Let us pray. Our gracious and merciful Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunities we've had today to come together and worship you and hear your word proclaimed. We pray that everything we've done today will be found acceptable in your sight. We ask to be with each of us now as we leave this place, that we remember your word and the teachings we've heard today, that we apply them to our lives, and we continue to reflect on them throughout the week. Dear Lord, please help each of us to be examples to others around us and seek to bring others to you. Lord, please be with each of us as we depart this place, that we will travel safely to our homes and back again. Please forgive us of our sins and deliver us from temptation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.